in this video, we're gonna talk about connections and control of basal nuclei. Now, if you look at the drawings, you will see that um, the basal ganglia, basal ganglia are strongly interconnected with cerebral cortex, thalamus, and the brain stem. And there are well-developed connections between cerebral cortex, striatum, and striatum, between striatum and globus pallidus, substantia nigra, pars radiculata, between um, globus pallidus, thalamus, and globus pallidus and the sub subthalamic nucleus. So we're gonna talk about all of these connections and how they work to activate cerebral cortex or deactivate the cerebral cortex. But let's look at the uh, structures and identify the structures here before we talk about the connections among them. Here is the putamen. This is the external globus pallidus. Here is the internal globus pallidus. This is the subthalamic nucleus, subthalamic nucleus. Here is the, the thalamus, this is the thalamus, third ventricle, thalamus. Down here is the subthalamus, the fornix, and the caudate nucleus radicular nucleus, ventral anterior nucleus, ventrolateral nucleus, and central median nucleus, central median nucleus. Now, there is, there is connection between the subthalamic nucleus and the external globus pallidus. So external globus, globus pallidus sends information to the subthalamic nucleus and both globus pallidus, its external and internal parts receive afferent information from the subthalamic nucleus. In other words, efferent and afferent connections between globus pallidus and the subthalamic nucleus form the subthalamic fasciculus, subthalamic fasciculus, this one here. Now, the efferents originating from the internal uh, globus pallidus run, run posterior to the subthalamic nucleus and form the anza lendicularis, anza lendicularis. There are also efferent fibers running anterior to the subthalamic nucleus, they form the lendicular fasciculus, lendicular fasciculus, which forms the uh, age two of the foral. This, this lendicular fasciculus and the anza lendicularis come together and form the thalamic fasciculus. H1 of 4L, which then terminate in the, in the uh, ventral anterior nucleus and the ventral lateral nucleus. Now, before looking at the connections of the basal ganglia and how they uh, activate or inhibit certain components of the basal nuclei, 
uh, thalamus, the uh, subthalamic nucleus, and the cerebral cortex, we need to understand some important features. Now, the red, red lines indicate activation. The blue line indicates inhibition here. So the efferent from cerebral cortex to striatum are activator, and they use glutamate as a neurotransmitter. So the cortex actually activates striatum. But the neurons in the striatum are inhibitory in nature. That means when striatum spontaneously inhibit, striatum spontaneously inhibits substantia nigra, pars reticulata, internal globus pallidus, and external globus pallidus. You can see it here. Also, uh, external globus, I'm sorry, internal globus pallidus inhibits the thalamus. So neurons in SNR, SNR, and GPI are also inhibitory in nature. So it means the neurons in SNR means the substantia nigra, nigra uh, pars reticulata, and internal globus pallidus inhibit the thalamus. And efferents of the thalamus stimulate the cerebral cortex, stimulate the cerebral cortex. Now let's look at the direct pathway, direct pathway and how it works and what it does to the cerebral cortex at the end. Well, it activates the cerebral cortex, but how the direct pathway activates the cerebral cortex? So look at here, cortical cells project excitatory inputs to the striatum which in turn projects inhibitory neurons on the cells of the SNR and the GPI complex. So this SNR and GPI are inhibitory on the thalamus. But also, Striatum is also inhibitory on the SNR and, and the, the, the GPI. Now, if you, if you activate striatum, striatum turns out more inhibitory to the SNR and the GPI. So what happens? Activation of the stratum, this inhibits SNR and the GPI. So the inhibitory effect of SNR and GPI becomes less potent. So then uh, thalamus is activated or thalamus is released or escaped from the inhibitory effect of the SNR and the GPI. So there is a net reduction in inhibition of the thalamus via the striatum. So what happens? Ultimately, thalamus activates the cortex. So, so the, the SNR GPI complex projects directly on the thalamus through the inhibitory enza lenticularis pathway. The striatal, striatal inhibition of the SNR and the GPI complex 
coupled with SNR, GPI inhibition of the thalamus, therefore results in a net reduction of inhibition of the thalamus via striatum. <clears throat> the thalamus projects excitatory glutaminergic neurons to the cortex itself. The direct pathway, therefore, results in excitation of the motor cortex by the thalamus. Once stimulated, the cortex project, projects its own excited outputs to the brain stem and ultimately muscles, fibers via the lateral corticospinal tract. The following uh, the diaphragm illustrates the direct pathway. So the cortex, cortex stimulates striatum. Now we know that striatum inhibits the inhibits the uh, SNR and the GPI complex. So inhibition of this SNR and the GPI means they become, this complex becomes less inhibitory on the thalamus. So thalamus escapes or thalamus is released from the inhibitory effect of the SNR and the GPI complex. So the thalamus stimulates cortex, cortex becomes, cerebral cortex becomes more activated than the activated cerebral cortex activates the muscles through the lateral spinal, uh, I'm sorry, lateral corticospinal tract and the muscles become more active. This is the hyper kinetic state. Okay. Before getting into indirect uh, pathway, let's review some important features so we can understand how the indirect pathway deactivates the cortex. Efferents from cerebral cortex to striatum are activated or use glutamate, you may know this one. Now again, neurons in the striatum are inhibitory in nature. So striatum, striatum uh, inhibits the, look at the GPE or the external globus pallidus. So the neurons in in GPI are also inhibitory in nature. Neurons in the subthalamic nucleus are activator in nature. So they activate the SNR, activate the GPI. Efferents of the thalamus stimulate the cerebral cortex. Look at here. Also, the indirect pathway also starts from neurons in the, in the striatum. Once stimulated by the cortex, striatal neurons in the indirect pathway project inhibitory neurons uh, or the axons onto the cells of the globus pallidus externa, right here, which tonically inhibits the subthalamic nucleus, tonic inhibits subthalamic nucleus. This inhibition by the striatum of inhibitory projections of the GPE results in net reduction of uh, inhibition of the subthalamic nucleus. So the Subthalamic nucleus inhibits these inhibitory neurons in the in in the uh, GPI 
and also the in in SNR. So this inhibitory inhibitory uh, since inhibitory neurons are activated in SNR and in GPI, they uh, inhibit thalamus also. So inhibited thalamus cannot activate the cortex. Again, so the SDN in turn projects excitatory inputs to the SNR, SNR and the GPI complex, which inhibits the thalamus. The end result is inhibition of the thalamus, therefore decreased stimulation of the motor cortex by the thalamus and reduced muscle activity. So the direct and indirect pathways are therefore antagonist in their functions. So through, through direct and indirect pathways, basal ganglia uh, control the activation and deactivation of the cerebral cortex. So the, uh, the indirect pathway following is a dia diagram of the indirect pathway. Cortex stimulates the striatum, which inhibits, which inhibits GPE or the external globus pallidus, which becomes less inhibitor if you inhibit the inhibitor neurons in GPE, neurons here becomes less inhibitory on the subthalamic nucleus. So subthalamic nucleus kind of uh, rescues from the inhibitory effect of the GPE and becomes more excitatory. On the inhibitory neurons of the GPI and the and the SNR. So if you activate these inhibitory neurons, these inhibitory neurons uh, becomes more inhibitory on the thalamus, so the thalamus is finally inhibited. So thalamus becomes less active. So the thalamus uh, inhibit cannot activate or excite the cortex. So the what happens, the uh, deactivated uh, cerebral cortex cannot activate the muscles. So it, it causes overall the hypokinetic state. Now, if, if the, the basal ganglia or its components are damaged, some neurological uh, uh, diseases can, can take place. Here you see a man with Parkinson's disease displaying flexed walking uh, posture and here is the here is the clinical features in the Parkinson's disease head bent forward tremors of the head mask like facial expression, uh, rigidity, uh, stooped posture, weight loss, especially intention tremors. These are, uh, are seen with the Parkinson's disease. <clears throat> 